Right, as you can see, I've took the, the handlebars off since the last video. Um, I didn't video doing it, obviously it was, you saw I took the other bars off, just in case I've unscrew a couple of bolts. But what I'm going to start doing now, because I'd measured up, got my measurements, should I say, that I needed for my uh, new cables. I'm just going to start stripping this thing down now. So I'm going to start by taking this uh, front master cylinder brake line and caliper and everything off. So I shall uh, just take it off the tripod a second and show you what the crack is. Right, on the back, see there you've got the brake pipe coming up here and it's held on a little bolt there and then uh, underneath there's another bracket that's held on with an allen key here which in turn, there's the bracket under there, follow the cable down, the pipe sorry which in turn goes onto the caliper, which the caliper, as most focal know, is just held on with these two bolts. So, to start with, I'll take the, the brackets off the pipes. Off the pipe, should I say. And uh, once we've got them freed off, I'll set you up in a different position and we'll get the caliper off. Right, I just need to find my spanner. Right, spanner size for the bolt that was on here is 5 sixteenths. So, I'm not going to tell you how to take a bolt out. But support what I will say is support your your master cylinder because when you let the when you do take the bracket off obviously you're releasing a holding point on the pipe so it'll drop See there is that's the clamp off. Just pray it open and just lift the bracket out of the way. Just stick that on there. Right and now I'll let this hang down. Right, I'll just knock it off for a sec because I want to get a spanner because I've got to undo this indicator. I'll just be a sec. Right, five eighth spanner. Let's the indicator off. Let that hang down there. Just let that hang. Right, the next thing you want, if I can find it. I don't know if it's the right size. No. There it is. Now the Allen key. Right. 
Christ Almighty. Couldn't tell you what size that is. My eyes won't uh, focus in on anything that small. But basically, you just undo this Allen bolt underneath. Again, support your your pipe like I have there, just so that the master cylinder doesn't drop. And just feed it through to that side. And that can rest on the floor. Right, I'll just knock you off for a sec and I'll set you up in a different bid. Right, now these bolts are what are known as 12, 12 point bolts. Now, for those of you that are not 100% sure what that is, most of you will. Get that in. That is a 12 point socket. I don't know how well that's showing. It's got like multi splines in it compared to a six point. And you need, you can't undo a 12 point with a six point, it would just uh, round it off. So, anyways, get your 12 point socket on. Support your caliper underneath. The likelihood is it won't go anywhere. I've also got two different length bolts. Long one in the top, short one in the bottom. Now I've let go of that now, it's gone nowhere. But if the pads weren't tight or somewhere and you just pull the bolt out, the caliper could drop and if it hits a wheel it could damage the wheel. Oh. Right, that's the caliper off, along with the, the reservoir and the lever and the mirror. So I'll put that to one side. Right, I'll just knock you off again for a minute and we'll get on to the next bit. Right. I'm going to take the clutch lever and everything off, but obviously first we need to put some slack in the clutch cable so I can get it off at the handle, at the lever end. So, hopefully I've got the, the spanners at hand. Just give it maximum uh, free play in the cable and it makes it easier to get it all sort of undone type of thing. Right, knock you off a sec and get over to the other side. Right, and we'd uh, loosen in the, the cable so you've got maximum slack as you can see there. The the cables uh, free. Let's push. 
push your little pin out in the middle. And that releases the clutch cable. Just carefully let that dangle a second. And then I'll get the spanners and we'll undo the indicator. And that's your uh, clutch lever and mirror and stuff off on that one. Dump that on the floor. Right, knock you off again and we'll get on to the next bit. Right, one of the things I am going to be doing eventually, once I've uh, got a few other things done, is I'm taking off the forks and everything. Now, what I'm going to do, the next actual thing that I'm going to remove is the front wheel. But before I do that, I'm just going to loosen these top nuts on the forks. I'm just loosen them, not take them off. Um, and a tip for this is I always use a spanner on these rather than a socket. Um, and I'll always put a layer of tape. So that if you like when you're sliding it round on your chrome, it's not going to scratch it. Well, it probably still will, but less chance of it uh, scratching it. So as I say, I'm just going to loosen these. Mm -hmm. So let's keep it round. That's that. So now we can move on to the next bit of taking the front wheel out. So I'll just knock you off again. Right. Next thing with this wheel removal, the reason I took the loosen the nuts off on the top of the forks, by the way, is it's easier to hold your forks when they're all complete. You can tuck your leg in behind your wheel and hold your fork and it makes it a lot easier to get them undone but now I've done that I'm going to loosen this uh, axle bolt off so it's a three quarter socket just crack that just make sure that wasn't spinning There's a washer in there that'll come out in a in a more right move it around a bit. Right, I'll just knock you off a sec because this is a bit awkward. Right, next thing is on the bottom of the, the right hand side fork there's two Allen Ed bolts that hold this lower cap on. So, we'll just have them undone. And another thing to be wary of, uh, these are metric. 
not uh, imperial. So I'll just take them out. And as you can see there, the, the cap's coming off the bottom. Right, I'll just knock you off a sec and get my nylon armor. Right, I'm just going to tap this uh, axle through a little bit. Just using a nylon hammer as well. Right, I think I need to put a bit of weight on the back of the bike. Right, I'll just knock you off a sec. Right, the uh, the axle's being a bit of a tight fit through the wheel. Um, so, a bit of uh, copper bar. I'm just using it obviously from the other side. Don't use a steel bar against the end of your axle because you'll damage the threads. But use copper bar. It's starting to free up a bit now. So that was quite uh, quite a tight fit on this. Uh, it's on the basically on the wheel space of where it's tight. If you look there, I don't know if you can see into the back of there, uh, but it's it's dragging on the on the actual spacer. Right, so I'll just get a rag. again but as you've just seen there it's just allowed me to pull the wheel straight out but I'm still not happy because the axle needs to come right out and it's not playing ball So, I'll just drop this wheel out a sec, just to keep you in, in view there. I'm just going to tap the axle out. I'm now starting to wonder, standard, these uh, juices use a three quarter axle. I was just going to say, I'm wondering if this alloy wheel has been bought with inch spaces in, uh, inch bearings in, rather than three quarter, which would then mean you've got a special reducer. Which uh, 
goes into it actually slips into the inch bearing which I can live with do you what that bearing looks like. bearing looks fucked and as you can see there this the spacer I'll just put that down on the other side is still is still in so if I go from this side down here because when this pops off it'll uh, be landing on the table rather than Right, so that's the front wheel out anyways, so I'll just, I'll just wheel this over here. And that's the spacer that's just come off the other side. Looking at that, I'll polish up nicely, anyways. So them so that they're a really tight fit on the axle but we'll sort that out I'll just put the nut back on the end The new wheel that I've bought, that's got uh, inch bearings in it, but I've also got uh, new three quarter inch bearings that can go in it. So I'll have a bit of a way up, because the wheel's brand new and obviously the inch bearings that are in it are brand new. They'll, uh, I might just use them, but what I'm going to do for now is just put this fork bottom back on.
and them adapters, the spacer adapters, that's that's not a conch job. This uh, you'd be surprised at how many how many bikes use uh, adapters to go from one inch bearings to three quarter axle, especially on Harley's. Right, so that's the wheel out. And I think the next thing we'll do is we'll take this mud guard off and then we'll actually take the forks out. So, I'll just knock you off for a sec, set you up in a different position. Right, mud guard. Not blocking your view. He's held on two bolts on either side, and these are Torx 40s. I know you can't see the other side from where the camera angle is. But what I'll do is I'll undo them. I'll undo them all first, just to loosen them. This is one of the reasons I like to go through a bike. That's actually had a, a bracket of summit on it. I wonder if that's had a tax disc holder on it. And they just haven't been asked to take it out. Which is why it could be loose if they've just waggled it to snap it off. So you got the end of there. It's like a some sort of bracket that's been snapped off. I was just going to say, just be careful when you take the bolts out because it's likely to spin on you. Now, luckily there was no to heat. It, uh, it's got a clear sort of a run all the way around. That's why I didn't take that one completely out. Because if, if it had done that, was loose at that side, it could have gone off. I mean, it wouldn't have done any major damage to any metal or out like that, but you could have chipped your paint on your on the uh, mug guard itself. See what I mean? If it didn't have the the bolt left in that side, it would have been a different story. Right, just carefully lift that out of the way, and we'll stick that over here out of the way. Right. I'll knock you off again, get you set up in a different position. Right, next thing is we'll unscrew the, uh, the nuts off the top of the fork. I 
there's actually a seal in here as well that goes in. I'll just leave it in for now. Washer on the floor. Ooh. Right, and I'll just lower you down a bit. Now, what we've got in here. I think, I'm not mistaken there, I think they're at Torx 45. Uh, Torx 45. I don't think they're 50. I think 50 might be a bit too big. No, no, we're wrong, they are a 50. So the pinch bolts on the lower tree, Torx 50, As you can see, I hope you can see. No, you can't. I'll come back out. Right. Just be gentle. Just put my leg in there to hold this other fork so it doesn't move about as much. Just. Uh, Sort of twisting it side to side as you go, we just come out. That's one fork out. Just clean that up over here for now. process on this other side I'll just knock you off a sec and get you out to the side now on this side one of the things you can do to help yourself you just turn your forks round so that on the like if you were sat on the bike you'd be pulling it round to the left you've got your fork locker here so if you just get your key and lock your forks that locks them so they can't just spin around everywhere and it makes it easier to get this side off because you, when I was doing the other side I'll just zoom you back out now when I was doing the other side I was holding on to this fork with my leg to stop it moving about well obviously there's no fork in that side now so using your lock makes it a bit easier so I'll grab my uh, Ratchet and me talks a bit.
Right, and that's your uh, pinch bolt out. So again, just give it a twist from side to side. Just go steady, and it'll just drop through. And that's the uh, other fork leg out. I'll just stick this down here next to the other. Now the forks, I'm not really going to be doing that with them. Um, apart from giving them a clean. And I will be taking the reflectors off the bottom leg and basically just polishing them up. So, as in fork removal, that's... Uh, that's about it, and if I can find the key, I'll take the fork back off. I'm going to do with the key, I'll only just have it a second ago. Well, that's weird. I'm sure I've got ghosts. Not in the pocket. And they're not still in the bike. And they're not on the bench. Fucking blind bastard, they were right in front of me. And just take four o'clock back off. I don't know if it works with really straight on. I've never, I never bother using these. Maybe it only works when they're on. Yeah, it only works when it's on lock that way. Right. Right, so I'll just knock you off for a sec and we'll get on to the next bit. <laughs> 